Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. You may remember a story I once wrote. An idea of my wife, Rebecca, in fact. The elves of the London underground. Well, I know a lot of you liked it. And so, tonight we'll visit Paris and the elves of the Paris Metro. These healing elves are kind and help people that need a little soothing of the soul. I hope you can find your own soothing in this story as you move towards sleep. Just one small thing. I'd like to thank those of you who support my work on Patreon, and if you'd like to become a patron, you can find the link below this video. Okay, let's do the relaxation session now, which will take a few minutes before tonight's sleep story. I'm going to count down from ten to one, and as I do, allow yourself to let go more and more. 10. Feel the support of the bed beneath you, or the floor, or whatever, or wherever you may find yourself sleeping tonight. Just feel the support beneath you, and beneath that, the earth our home. Feel the solidity of it. And with that awareness, allow yourself to let go a little bit more now. Just let go. Really let go. Nine. Feel into your body now. Notice where you may still be holding. Maybe it's in your feet. Maybe it's in your hands. Maybe it's in your belly. Or maybe you're still holding in your face. You don't need to show your face to anyone now. There's no pressure to look in any particular way. So just completely relax now. Completely let go. Your body has worked hard for you today. It's time to let it rest. Eight. The day is done. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. Whatever thoughts you may be having, they more than likely don't serve you right now. Thoughts on the day that was, Thoughts on what is to come. Just see those thoughts. Welcome them. And then just let them go. And watch them as they float away. Like 
clouds in a night sky, or leaves on a moonlit river. Seven. Peace lives within you. It is always there, waiting to be found, waiting to be seen, waiting to be felt. See if you can find the peace within you tonight. It is your constant friend. Six. You are safe. Allow my voice to be an anchor of safety tonight. A friend. A guiding, calming friend that will only ever take you to safe places and allow that fact to help you let go a little more now. Five. This is your time. This is your moment. It is your time to move towards sleep. You have nothing to do now. Nowhere to go. Four. You deserve rest. You deserve sleep. We all do. And so allow that fact to help you move closer and closer towards sleep tonight. Three. Begin to engage with your imagination now. Begin to see Paris, that great city. Begin to see the life on this rainy night and see as people descend from the rainy streets above to the labyrinth of tunnels underneath to the Paris metro where we will be meeting some people in need of kindness and gentleness Two, allow yourself to feel a little gratitude now. Gratitude for this moment. For the shelter you have. For the ability to listen to this calming sleep story. and for the opportunity of rest. One. Completely letting go now. As I tell you, tonight's sleep story. As the evening drizzle blankets Paris, the city's lights flicker like distant stars. 
And below this serene tableau, the Paris Metro rumbles gently, its cars ferrying weary souls through the underbelly of the city. Amidst the tired eyes and quiet contemplation of the passengers, a little-known secret breathes life into the network of trains. They are known as the Elves of the Paris Metro, or Les Lutins du Metro, as they are called by the locals. And these are not mere figments of the imagination, but kind, visible helpers that appear to those who need them. In one such train, as Line 9 of the Paris Metro snakes its way from Pont de Sèvres towards Marais de Montreuil, it carries within its belly a diverse section of Parisian life, each individual wrapped in their own narrative, and among the train passengers is an elderly gentleman named Georges who sits quietly by the window, his eyes watching, looking around, observing the life that surrounds him. His demeanor is contemplative, and in his lap rests an old leather-bound book that seems, perhaps, even older than he. As the train rumbles past the vibrant neighborhoods and past landmarks unseen above, George's thoughts wander to his youth, to memories of days filled with laughter, and nights aglow with promise. Now, his days are quieter, his companions fewer. The city has changed, of course, and sometimes he feels like a spectator in his own life, watching a new Paris evolve before his eyes. At the Trocadero station, a flicker of movement catches George's eye. Beside him, materializes a small figure, clad in a cloak, made from discarded metro tickets. It is a little elf, with a kind and wizened face, and he introduces himself. Good evening, Monsieur Georges. I'm Noel, a lutin of the Metro, here to share your journey for a while. Georges, a man of deep intellect and curiosity, isn't startled in the slightest. Instead, he smiles, a spark of amusement lighting up his old wise eyes. 
And what brings an elf to an old man on an evening like this, he asks, his voice tinged with genuine interest. Little Noel, sitting cross-legged on the seat, looks up at George with eyes glowing softly. Ah, the city may change, George, and the people, they may come and go, but stories like yours, memories like yours, are very important to this city. You are never merely a spectator, monsieur, but a keeper of tales, a bridge from the old world to the new. Your memories are treasures, more valuable than you might imagine. These words, simple yet profound, touch a chord in George. As the train moves through the tunnels, a sense of continuity settles within him. And as quickly as the little elf appeared, he is gone, leaving George with a feeling of a deeper connection to his city. Meanwhile, on the line six, circling the heart of the city, from Charles de Gaulle Etoile to Nation, a young woman named Juliette sits isolated in her thoughts. Her day at the university has been long, filled with exams and the pressure of impending final projects. Her brows are furrowed, her lips pursed in silent stress as she stares blankly at the passing tunnel lights. Suddenly, from the corner of her eye, Juliette notices a soft glow emanating from the seat beside her. She turns her head to see a small figure no larger than her own hand, with a gentle face and eyes sparkling with mischief and kindness. The elf wears a tiny cap and a cloak made of some form of food wrapper. She looks smart, though, and she has obviously made an effort. Bonsoir, Juliette, the elf says. I'm Marianne, one of the many Lutan who roam these tunnels to help people like you. It seems like you carry a heavy load tonight. Startled, but intrigued, Juliet nods. Her initial surprise, melting into curiosity. May we? It's been a hard day, 
she admits, allowing a slight smile. Exams don't leave much room for rest. The little elf nods wisely, her tiny feet swinging idly as she sits on the edge of the vacant seat. May you must remember, Juliette, every train reaches its station. Every night yields to dawn, and every challenge you meet is a step towards understanding. Stress is like this train, a journey from one point to another. Allow yourself to breathe, to look beyond the tunnels, and you'll see the light at each stop. Her words wash over Juliette, like the calming rain above ground. She feels her tension ebbing away, replaced by a gentle reassurance that the path she is on is just one part of a larger journey. Merci, Marianne, she says, feeling lighter. Her spirits lifted by the unexpected encounter. The little elf tips her cap an old repurposed ticket stub and with a wink, she vanishes, just as quietly as she appeared, leaving a trace of sparkle in the air, and a sense of peace in Juliet's heart as she prepares to face another day. Meanwhile, on line two of the metro, as it makes its bustling journey from Port Dauphin to Nassian, curving around the historic heart of Paris, it approaches the elevated station of Anvers, overlooking the shadow of the Sacre Coeur Basilica in the early evening drizzle, and a woman named Solène, who rides the train every evening from her job in central Paris, is feeling lonely. Her daily commute makes her feel even lonelier. Surrounded by people, but never feeling like one of them. Solène gazes out at the rain-drenched city, and her thoughts are interrupted when a gentle shimmer of light appears beside her. Materializing from the subdued glow is a tiny elf. Bonsoir, Solène, the elf says, with a gentle voice that carries the warmth of a long-lost friend. 
My name is Emil, and I'm here to share your journey tonight. His kind eyes meet hers, radiating understanding and compassion. Solen, though initially startled, feels an unexpected comfort in Emile's presence. She smiles faintly, nodding for him to continue. Emile, sensing her deep-seated loneliness, speaks softly. Paris may seem vast, and the crowds daunting, but in this city of millions, no one is truly alone. Each light in this city tells a story of someone who might be looking for a friend just like you. There are possible friends everywhere, and each evening, as you travel these tracks, remember that connections can be found in unexpected places. And sometimes, just sometimes, sharing a moment can kindle friendships that light up the darkest hours. I'm your friend. Never forget that. You are worthy of friendship. And as the train dips back into the tunnel, Emile's figure begins to fade, leaving behind a trail of soft, sparkling light. Solen feels a stir of hope, her heart a little lighter, her evening a bit less lonely. And with a renewed sense of possibility, she resolves to open herself to the stories and other lives of this city, and perhaps she'll find the connection she longs for. On line five, as the metro ferries its passengers from Place d'Italie through the historic core to Bobigny. The train cars rumble along, filled with the soft murmur of conversations and the occasional shuffle of feet. Among the evening commuters is a middle-aged man named Julien, who sits quietly at the end of a row, his gaze fixed on the map above the door. Each stop 
brings him closer to home. Yet the proximity does little to lift the heaviness in his heart. He is recently divorced, and his evenings are now marked by a silence. He hasn't yet learned to fill. As the train pulls away from Republic, a faint glow begins to emanate from the seat next to Julien. Within moments, a small elf materializes. He is playful and kind looking. He introduces himself with a serene smile. Bonsoir, Julien. I'm Pascal. And I'm here to ride with you for a while. Julien looks around. No one else seems to notice the elf. Oh, they can't see me. Don't worry. I only appear to people who need me. And I think you need a friend tonight. Julien is intrigued and nods hesitantly, allowing the conversation to unfold. Pascal, sensing Julien's recent struggles with loneliness and change, speaks softly. Change, you know, it's like the seasons of this city. It brings both loss and renewal. It can seem cold and harsh at first. But over time, it reveals new paths, new possibilities. Pascal gestures toward the window as the train speeds through the tunnel. The rhythmic clacking of the wheels underscoring his words. Imagine each station as a new chapter in your life, Julianne. Some bring joy, others sorrow, but all are stops on a journey that shapes who you are. Julien listens, the metaphor settling in his mind, mingling with the uncertainties he's been carrying. But how do I move on? he asks. Pascal's eyes twinkle with a wisdom that is older than he looks. One day at a time, Julien. One day at a time. Just like this train. Keep moving forward. Explore new hobbies. Meet new people. And allow yourself to feel every emotion that comes. Each day is a step away.
from the past and a step towards a new beginning. As the train approaches Bastille, Pascal's form begins to fade, leaving behind a warm, comforting glow that lingers around Julien. A sense of hope, small and fragile, begins to take root in his heart. And with a deep breath, Julien feels a determination stir within him, a readiness to embrace the next chapter of his life, whatever it may hold. He is grateful for his unexpected encounter with Pascal, the little elf of the metro. On line 11, extending from Châtelet to Marais des Lilas, a late evening train carries fewer passengers, each absorbed in their own thoughts, creating a hushed atmosphere that almost feels intimate. Among them is an older woman named Colette who sits alone, her hands clasped tightly in her lap, her face is lined with the wisdom of years, but it carries a look of restrained emotion. Colette a retired school teacher has spent her life nurturing others. Yet now she finds herself grappling with the need to let go of past grievances that have quietly shaped her golden years. As the train hums steadily beneath the streets of Paris, the dim lighting of the car flickers momentarily, and beside Colette, a soft golden light begins to form, and from it emerges a petite elf with a tender expression. She introduces herself in a voice as soft as velvet. Good evening, Colette. My name is Elodie and I'm here to share your journey tonight. Colette, surprised, yet not frightened, turns towards Elodie, noticing the kind, compassionate gaze in the little elf's eyes. Elodie, 
sensing the burdens Colette carries, speaks gently. It's time to let go of the weights that tether your heart to the ground. To release the old hurts and embrace the peace that you deserve. Melody reaches out a tiny hand to touch Colette's clasped hands. Her touch is light, but filled with warmth. Imagine each of these stations as a place where you can leave a piece of your burdens. With each stop, visualize leaving behind a memory or a hurt. Letting it stay deep in the tunnels, never to burden you again. Moved by Elodie's words, Colette feels a tear trickle down her cheek, a symbol of the release that she's been longing for, but didn't know how to achieve. But how can I truly let go? Colette whispers. L.O.D. smiles warmly. Start by forgiving. Not just those who've wronged you, but also yourself. Forgiveness doesn't change the past, but it enlarges the future. Tonight, as you travel home, think of each stop as a breath of fresh air. A chance to begin anew. And as the train approaches Port de Lilas, L.O.D.'s figure begins to dissolve into the same warm glow from which she appeared, leaving Colette with a feeling of lightness that she hasn't felt in years. Now, as night fully falls upon Paris, and the trains are put away, Each one of the people who were touched by the elves' kindness lie in their beds, and each one of them feels lighter and feels ready for deep rejuvenating sleep, and of course, let's not forget our elf friends, who are in their hidden little world, an old abandoned station on the Paris metro, 
and just as their human friends, extinguish the lights for the night. So do the little elves of the Paris metro, and each one of them is tucked up in their makeshift little beds and each one of them drifts off into a deep, restful sleep, a sleep that each of them richly deserves.